My name is Miguel Soto Garcia Avelina. That's my full name. I was born in Mexico City, 22 years old. Um, and I, I've been writing music for almost, like, more than half of my life. I, th I think uh, I started like in, around middle school when, when I first started writing songs with, like, with my friends. We, we did a, a band together. That was like my first, my first group. And uh, it, was, it was about like the time with uh, the Guitar Hero, you know, and all that. And everyone wanted to be a rock star and have a band. So um, it was along those times. And I, I started writing with them and, you know, scribbles and notebooks. Very, like hundreds of shitty songs. Uh, yeah, that, that's how I started, like just writing songs. Um, and along that, I actually started singing in musical theater. So I, I, I didn't know I could sing. My mom was like, you should go audition. And I, and I went audition for, for a theater company. And apparently I had a good voice. And I, I didn't even know because I, I, I never sang. So that's how I started singing. But then I started going more towards music. And like I said, with the band, and I started like writing music and stuff. And I, I realized how much I loved it. And for all my friends that were in the band, it became like, like a hobby. But for me, it, I, I started becoming really serious about it. And I knew that I wanted to like learn more and go like further than like just the private lessons that I had in Mexico because I, I was taking like drum private lessons, guitar, piano, I, all the instruments and, and, and vo uh, vocal lessons. So I, but I, I, I wasn't getting enough. I wanted to like really like learn about like the core of music. So um, I told my parents if, if they would send me to the United States because I knew there, there were like some of the best schools there. And they actually did send me. They, said, they first say, that, like, we're just going to send you for a year to see if you like it. And they sent me to California, to this uh, art school called Idaho Arts Academy. Um, and I, I just fell in love with the place. And, like, I, I love being surrounded by, like, musicians that wanted to pursue that as a career. It was, it was really inspiring. Um, so, and I just ended up staying there all, like, all high school, four years in California. Uh, and it was amazing. And from then, I, I really, like, I was sure that I wanted to be a, mus uh, a musician. I was sure that I wanted to, like, do that for a living because, like, there's really not, nothing else that I've ever done that felt, like, um, that I felt so right doing. You know, it just, it just felt natural. It felt like it was, like, when I was on stage, when I was singing, when I was writing songs, that, that, that felt like my, my essence, you know? So, um, yeah, so... We just, um, I just decided to, to, keep, to keep going. And I, Berkeley had always been like, like the dream, you know, I, I've, I've heard, I think the first time I saw Berkeley was in a movie. I don't remember which movie it was, but like, it, it's, it always was like the, like the dream school for our musicians. So I, I applied there and I, I got in and I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. And, I, and yeah, so I, I just, um, I've been doing my thing, writing songs. I started my, my, my band for real. I, I've always wanted to have a, like a serious band. So I started Taller Than Trees, and it's been my, my project since. Um, so just, just writing songs, um, performing as much as I can. Co COVID was really hard because of that, because the, the performance opportunities like really kind of like are dying a little bit, but uh, we're trying to make the best out of it. That's, uh, that's one of my oldest songs. I, I wrote that like, I wrote that in high school. Um, I wrote it when I, um, I first started dating this girl and it, it was like, I went through a lot of really, really shitty relationships in my life, like really bad, where I was just very invested in them and I, it wasn't being reciprocated. Um, and for the first time I met this girl that, um, that she actually like loved me back and it was, it felt like real love. I think it, I, I could say that was the first time I fell in love. So um, I had this really like, uh, strong feelings of love and I was like so amazed by this uh, new thing that I was feeling that I never felt before and and I wanted to put it into a song like kind of like express how like that person becomes part of you like kind of like a tattoo you know like it's part of your skin so um, yeah that's where the idea came from just went to like a practice room in my old high school and and uh, and I also remember that I said to myself I've been writing a lot of like guitar ballads like love songs I don't want it to be like that I, I want this to be like like an like a, not an aggressive, but I want it to be like an kind of like a a song with a lot of energy and with a lot of like um, excitement and like kind of kind of like that feeling that you get when you're when you're like really in, like in love with someone and you just feel like you want to jump and of like happiness. So I, I wanted to get something like that um, into the song um, and just express that like sexiness and that. Um, you know, yeah, I, I think excitement is a, the, the best word to describe it, but I, but I, I think that's, that's how the song came. Um, and like I said, I wrote, it was, this was like, uh, I'm bad with math. This was like uh, six years ago that I wrote this song. 
Um, and I, I, sh I, I played it at my school in my, like, my recital and people loved the song. Everyone was like, you should record it. There's a version of the song we re I recorded with my friends from high school uh, in like a little studio uh, that we had there. Um, and it's, uh, it's in, in, in iTunes right now and Spotify everywhere. Uh, but that's like, that's like the first version I released. It's just like a sort of like a live version of it. But now, now that I, you know, that I put this band together and that I'm kind of like bringing all my music back into this uh, project, I wanted to revive, like bring back uh, the song, uh, and I wanted to just take it to the next level. So like, right, right now, I'm, I'm working with an amazing team of uh, producers, musicians, and so we're trying to like really make this great song into a, like an even greater song. We just want like that like sound to be like pristine because uh, uh, this song is really special. I mean, it, the song is pretty straightforward. This, I mean, there is a metaphor of the tattoo, you know, like like, like I told you, like the that person being part of you very deeply, and it's like part of your skin. Um, the, I, I wanted, I guess, um, I'm, let's think about the. I don't know how else to say it. It's hard. So it's, it's kind of like that. Like, even if you try, you can't get away. You can't get away from that person because it feels like that person has become part of your skin. So I feel like in, in the verses, it's, it, there's a lot about like. You know, like it's part of your skin, it's in your veins. Um, you know, there's a lot of that, like kind of like, like uh, I wanted to use the body as a, like a, it's the vessel of like what you, the love that you're feeling. So, um, you know, like, like the tattoo is like in a, an imprint of that person in you. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and then in the chorus is just like kind of like, say, like um, saying out loud how that person is like your, you're um, you're one, you know, and like and how they lied your whole world. But so it's it's a little more cheesy <laughs> in the choruses. But the verses are more about like the tattoo, like the me the metaphor of the of the love and how intense it is. And I think that's why the song is it's I wrote I wrote it to be so intense because I wanted to like be, have a, like a lot of energy and be intense because it, it is meant to be you know, like a little sexual, a little like. Um, yeah, just like embody the whole thing of love and like and physicality. It's very, it's a very physical song. Um, well, right now I'm working on a, on a couple projects. Um, th these uh, we've been with the total entries. We've been releasing single after single, and and we're trying to keep the flow of that. And eventually, this will all lead up to a, sort of an album that will have, uh, of course, more songs. You know, but. Um, I think right now at the at the point that we are we think it's best to to be releasing singles rather than a, an album because we don't have like a big enough fan base to like have like a full album delivered and we want to like do you know like song by song so that, that's that's one of the things I'm working on right now like just uh, a lot of the songs are recorded but we are uh, working on production and then we're also like coming up with new songs that are better than the other ones so we're like okay no we have to record that one. So we're kind of doing both recording and producing at the same time as we go. Um, and uh, just recently I started a, an environmental, it's, it's an environmental group. Um, so basically the, the idea is we wanted to bring like, people from the music industry and from the, not, not just the music, from the arts industry, let, let me say, but like people from, like, you know, fashion designers, painters, uh, artists, and managers, anything that you can think of that is in the arts industry, we want to bring people together that are concerned for the environment and use using their art as a means to spread awareness. So we kind of we started this platform this for youth for students. Uh, for it started in Berkeley, but now we're trying to expand. And basically, we just um, we just gather people and we help uh, projects that are bringing awareness towards environmental. Uh, any environmental issues or climate change, any, anything related to that, and we try to bring awareness to it through through music, through art, through anything. So um, that and that's the Mama Initiative. So uh, right now we're working on uh, the transition because of COVID. We had a lot of plans, um, like we had a a festival plan. We had like all these things that we wanted to do, but that required <laughs> a non-COVID state. And now now with COVID, uh, people are not uh, you know all of our projects kind of like got like paused. So right now we're trying to work in on the transition of um, becoming a, so, a social media presence and and having like you know a YouTube channel and and having content from our artists and from the people that are part of the initiative to be uh, to be um, sharing their their craft through through our um, yeah through social media basically so we're trying to to adapt that way um, and that's that's basically the two main things I'm doing Mama Initiative and Taller Than Trees.
I, I think, I mean, the first impression when I looked at them, I was like, whoa, that looks beautiful. Like, they're, like I mean, I, I love the, how it looks, like the, the shiny, it looks so clean and, and professional. And um, the first time I tried it, it was like a week ago, and I tried it uh, for a recording of mine, and the sound was crystal clean. The, the connections actually, like, I love that you have the secure thing. So like when you plug it in, it like, it feels like it's like secure. It's not like a wobbly cable or anything. Like it feels like really secure in the, in the mic and in the interface. And it, it sounds, it sounds crystal clear, no inter interference. It's, it's a really great, it's a, it's a great cable, I think. Um, yeah, I would recommend. Yeah, you guys can follow us on Taller Than Trees Music, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you do, Taller Than Trees Music, uh, Spotify, you just search Taller Than Trees. Uh, yeah, and that's how you can find us. If you want to find me directly, I'm, I'm just Mike Soto. But, uh, but yeah, all my music is through Taller Than Trees right now. Um, and thank you guys for having me. Thank you for, for everything. It's, it's been a pleasure.